Your kidney function is 60%. Now what? Well, welcome to another video. I am Dr. Ahmed Hergan. I'm an endocrinologist treating diabetes and diabetic kidney disease every day. So in this video, we are going to talk about prognostic factors for kidney disease. So we'll be talking about like things like that determine whether someone's with stage three kidney disease will need to go to dialysis or not. What are the chances and what do we do about it? But don't worry, we are not going to bore you with just a list of medical terms and statistics. I am going to do it with some humor. Uh, some of you don't like it, but what can I do? I can't. It's hard to change. What is better than a good laugh? Just brighten up some serious topics, right? But let's talk about some clinical stuff. Let's get into the nitty gritty stuff, right? Certain stuff that you really need to know why your kidney can decline faster than anyone else. Now, think about albuminuria. Hmm, don't worry, you know, you don't have to know how to pronounce it. That means protein in the urine or albumin in the urine. Uncontrolled blood pressure, hypertension, hyperglycemia. I'm trying to be fancy here, right? I'm a doctor. I, I got to make sure that you don't understand. No, I'm just kidding. Hyperglycemia means it's high blood sugar. So basically, if you want to keep your kidneys in good shape, you got to try to avoid these things, the high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high, high, high everything. But there's more. There are plenty of other risk factors that have been identified. What are they? Environmental exposures, right? Like heavy metals and things like that, like lead and smoking, right? Which smoking brings you everything you don't want anyway, like all the heavy metals and toxins. So if you want your kidneys to be happy, even with diabetes, you gotta stay away from at least smoking. And if you have lead paint around your house, maybe it's not a good place to live in. Now, other factors like metabolic syndrome, right? So metabolic syndrome or syndrome X or insulin resistance, you don't have to have diabetes to have kidney disease. Even obesity has been associated with increased risk of kidney disease totally independently, you have high blood sugar or not. Now, basically, you just have to try to live a healthy lifestyle and your kidneys will be happy campers. Now, genetics, that's right, folks. It's not just environment. We blame everything on our environment. We blame everything on the food. But some people do whatever they want, eat whatever pizza they want, right? And they still make it to 80s to 90s. Well, you hope that you're one of them, but you don't even know. Well, some people, unless your family members are not doing so well, but you may not inherit the same genes, right? Sometimes it's less than ideal. So thanks to our parents, we may not do so well, or we may do very well. But again, some genetic mutations can make us prone to kidney disease. And some of these mutations actually happen later in life. We may not have inherited those genes, but they may happen later. So instead of blaming your lifestyle for everything, now you have an excuse to blame your parents, right? No, just kidding. Mom and dad, we love you. And if you were wondering, by the way, don't mind my kids screaming at the background. If you're hearing them right now, I hear them all day long. So bear with me. Diabetes and high blood pressure can be hereditary as well. Now to talk about the GFR, which is the glomerular filtration rate that is on your report on your blood work, right? So what about that? Is this a really good measurement? So we call this GFR as well, right, on the blood work. But here's the deal. Diabetics often have artificially inflated GFR. So, for example, if your blood work shows a GFR of 90, don't go just celebrating yet. You don't say, oh, yeah, I don't have a kidney disease. Or your doctor may say, oh, your kidney is working 90%. I would say be asked that because you could actually be hovering around 60, sneaking up on a stage 3 kidney disease, although your blood work shows 90 well, that is because there's something called hyperfiltration, which we'll talk about. Now, this is what we call intraglomerular hypertension. Wow, that's a big word. Well, means that high blood pressure in your glomerulus, which is your the functioning units in your kidneys. One problem is there is compensatory response to nephron, which is the kidney cell. Let's make it simple. Like throwing a tantrum, like... Your kidney is saying, you got, I got to keep this GFR high, man, okay? So I got to do something to adapt to this new environment where, you know, all this glucose is gumping up the membrane where I cannot really get any toxins out of here. So I got to push it harder. 
and to push harder, I need more pressure. So just like think like your kidney is trying to be the bouncer, overwhelmed with everybody is trying to get in and he's trying to keep things at bay and says, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm just gonna, you know, call more guys, bring more bouncers and get this under control. It's called compensation. And then the glomerular size in your kidneys grow, get bigger. Sometimes on the ultrasound, you'll see big kidneys. Don't be saying, oh yeah, I have big kidneys. We're not talking about tits here. We're talking about kidneys, dude. When they get big, it goes big for a reason. So your kidneys are hitting the gym and bulking up to take care of the business. So next time you are waiting for your blood work results, remember, it's not just as it looks always. So hyperfiltration is a real thing. Like for example, if you start people on ACE inhibitor or a Lozartan or medications like that, or a Jardians or medications like that, that are supposed to protect kidney function, next thing you know, the kidney function looks like down. Actually, it's not down. The kidney function is going to where it needs to be. These medications sometimes will help your kidneys to back off a little bit because the help is coming. But patients panic. Oh, my kidney function is going down. No, it's not going down. It's going to where it's supposed to be. But that is a real phenomenon where your kidneys hyperfiltrate. Looks like your kidney function is better than it is. And next thing you know, bam, 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 kidney function is dropping. Okay, let's talk about other things. Calcium phosphate deposition. Now, calcium phosphate which is calcium and phosphorus together, or metabolic acidosis, or high cholesterol, or high uric acid levels. These are no joke. You know, let's buckle up and go for a ride because these are important. First up, calcium phosphate deposition happens a lot if you have parathyroid problems, not the thyroid, parathyroid problems with high calcium and phosphate. These guys get together and throw a big party in your kidneys and to picture it like, you know, uninvited guests showing up to your party and they are refusing to leave. They're like, we're going to make it home here. They just hang around, by the way. They are causing some real damage to your kidneys. Not cool, calcium and phosphate. Not cool. Next, we have metabolic acidosis. Now, metabolic acidosis, think like a, a music band plays music, but so bad that it hurts your ears. You have to have some acid in your system, but you have to balance it. It's called pH. It's basically too much acid in your body, which kidneys are struggling to get rid of. And that's not the alpha lipoic acid. That's not the good kind of acid. It's the kind of acid that your body needs to remove. If you're looking for a real acid trip, if you know what I mean, that's not it. So high cholesterol levels, too much fat in the blood is another problem. So fats are in the jolly, lovable kind like the Santa Claus. Think more like a villain in a superhero movie causing havoc wherever they go. So if you think that the cholesterol is good for you or some doctors are telling you that, if you're a diabetic, forget that. You know, when you're a diabetic, the cholesterol will stick up to your blood vessels like nothing else. Too much of these fats really clog up your kidneys like a bad plumbing job. So lastly, we have this high uric acid, right? So it's bad, bad, bad. Uric acid is bad for you. It's a fancy word is hyperuricemia. It's a lot of uric acid in your blood. It's causing a lot of bad things. Now, what is the bad thing, right? It could be gout. Well, that's, you know, that's not good. Kidney stones, oh, that kills you. Well, not literally, but with pain. And the kidney failure, right? It's a party pooper, man. Now, how do you really produce the uric acid? Well, you might be thinking, you know, where is it really coming from? Well, folks, it is all about the food we eat. So our bodies generate uric acid when they break down certain substances called purines, right? They are coming from certain foods like your beloved steak, your meats, even the beer. So as you munch away, your body gets to work breaking down this purines and next thing, vola. Uric acid is born. It is kind of like your body's unwanted byproduct from your delicious meals, the best tasting stuff. So next time you're enjoying that juicy steak, remember, you have to be in moderation because this unwanted gas called uric acid is being created in the kitchen of your body. Now, next, let's tackle how we can slow down this beast, the relentless train called kidney disease. This involves keeping your blood pressure in check, less than 120 over 70. 
if possible, please. And then deploying the extra treatments for proteinuria, like protein in the urine or albumin in the urine. So you got to take care of this, especially if you're throwing more than 300 milligram per day of protein in the urine, you are not going to do well. Your, your kidneys are going to go in a free fall. Now, if you are a proteinuria club member, uh, you've got a couple superheroes lined up for you. Now, one is that every doctor uses this, like you, you don't have to be a real doctor, you can be a resident or just a medical student, whatever. You will know what an ACE inhibitor is. You will know what an angiotensin receptor blocker is. This is like standard of care. Every, every one of you are on it. You like it or not, your doctor will push that on you. Now, they really help. You know, they're like avengers of kidney protection. It's been proven, da 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 da, da. Now, next, we also use SGLT2 inhibitors. They're not the best of the best, but if you have kidney function, like Jardines or Farsiga, will help you if you have the money to pay for it, right? So not everybody is that lucky, but it will help you if you can pay for it. See, the slowing down the kidney disease is not a solo act, right? So you may need to control multiple things. You may need to throw in some medications, etc., etc. Now, also, a lot of doctors don't even think about it. They don't understand it, but it's important. There's another part of kidney protection, which is certain vitamins, not everything, right? Which one is that? Benfotiamine, right? It's a B1, fat-soluble. The superstar has been showing up as dance moves in the kidney health arena, reducing the kidney disease among diabetics, and nobody knows about it. Why? Because it's not a pharmaceutical. It's not a big money maker. So nobody's promoting to doctors. Nobody is teaching them in the schools. Nobody's lobbying for them. But it's a hidden gem. It's like the unexpected plot twist in your favorite movie. You use that, you're gonna have a lot of benefits. Now, you might be asking, where can I get my hands on the benfotiamine? Well, my friends, you can find it anywhere. But if you're looking for a quality supplement that you can trust, SugarMDS.com or SugarMD brand will be your go-to. So it is like your one-stop shop for all things kidney-friendly. So step right up and give your kidneys the VIP treatment they deserve. Well, I hope you keep your kidneys until you die after a happy long life and i hope none of you end up with dialysis i hate that when it happens and thank you for watching please share this video everybody needs to hear these things because people are so little so uneducated about these things please share now subscribe give a like and i'll see you in the next video Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. Uh, it, if you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.